For the last 20 some years, my wife Brooke and I have bought pieces of property we've enjoyed, we thought looked good, had potential, and we have move on to the property and clear some land, put up a tent, bring in a camper, whatever, and then start building a homestead or a cabin. And that's been our life for the last 20 years or so. Being involved in YouTube, Brooke and I have had the opportunity over the last few years to share a lot of that sort of lifestyle. What I'd like to do with this video is just give you guys kind of the inside perspective of what I would be looking for when I'm filming. Just the average day. The stuff that I think would be interesting. Stuff I think looks good on film. Kind of the way that the videos are shot on this channel. So many people want to get involved in YouTube and want to participate on that platform. And I hope this video is interesting in that respect of kind of what I'm looking for when I film stuff for this channel. What I'm always trying to do is just find the interesting things around me and get five or ten seconds of each one and try to get a good clear shot and as close as possible generally so you can kind of see the texture and, and really see the color of something. I don't generally shoot a lot of stuff from a long ways away so you don't see like a person doing something. You generally just see like what it would look like in your hand. My idea of filming a lot of times is almost more like a slideshow. I, I take 10 seconds of one thing and then I take 10 seconds of something else and then I you know, generally only use about two seconds. But I just try to shoot things that look interesting. Take this butter dish for example. It's just a butter dish, but it's got great color, right? So I, I get up close and I, I get a shot of that. The Tabasco sauce here on the table. This is stuff you'd see in a camp. And as opposed to just Telling people we're at a camp and we're hopefully going to build and showing the whole big scene with somebody in it doing something, I generally want to shoot stuff really, really close. You know, take this example. You see Brooke here eating breakfast. So you got the person with the plate of food eating the plate of food, but it's also really good to get that up close shot of the food so you really feel like you're there, like it's in your hand. Brooke made an absolutely wonderful breakfast. Oh, it was, just, it was just a wonderful morning at our camp. Ironically, this is a shot of me working, sort of, because I'm filming, and I'm eating what was filmed. What a gig, eh? Check out this little chipmunk. We brought up a bird feeder, because there's hardly any birds at our place up in the Upper Peninsula, and this guy keeps stealing our bird seed, so we'll deal with him later. After breakfast, Brooke and I headed out to a place called Crisp Point, which is an old lighthouse. This is, uh, we took a road to the east, about eight miles of real sandy bush road. This is on the, the southern shore of Lake Superior in the upper peninsula of Michigan, where this particular piece of property is. Now this lighthouse was built in 1903, I believe. It's like 58 feet tall. It was a life-saving station before it was a, uh, a lighthouse. They didn't have a lighthouse there originally. They just had a life-saving station. Because this coast is desolate, and there was lots of shipwrecks on this coast. So you can see, looking at this lighthouse, right, there's so much good stuff to shoot. And to get the sky, to get the waves. If you're in an environment like this, my kind of idea of the way I wanted to shoot it. I wanted big shots so you can see the, the coast. I'm getting some shots of Brooke because she's getting her camera gear situated and she's going to be filming. You'll see some of this stuff on her channel too. And then of course the lighthouse is the, is the, the thing here that's really interesting. So I'm trying to get as many shots as I can of the lighthouse that are interesting visually. The color's good. The subject is is interesting this one's nice it's got a nice bright side to the lighthouse you're looking straight up at i also like the texture of these bricks where the paint's peeling off it's just interesting stuff that you can see the texture of is generally what i shoot for when i'm filming stuff close up this station and lighthouse was ultimately taken over when the Coast Guard was created but this had been here years and years before the Coast Guard was uh, enacted. 
One thing about Lake Superior and the shore of Lake Superior that's amazing is the rocks. People come from all over the world to pick rocks on this shore. So getting some photos, getting some up close footage uh, of the rocks is, is one of the things I really want to do. Now the waves are a really cool subject to shoot here, but it's really hard to get the scope. It's actually quite violent water right now, but it's hard to tell. So even though this is a beautiful place, the lighthouse is an amazing thing to film. It's very interesting to look at. And the water is, is rough and it's, it's interesting. Getting the scope of the waves is the difficult part. It's the part that really would make that shot. Brooke and I spent, I don't know, probably three or four hours out here that day looking for agates. And this is a cool shot because I got this bird and the bird's in, in the frame coming from far out and then cuts out of the frame. I'm actually got my tripod set up in the water looking straight down at the rocks in that photo. And then of course looking down the coast is probably the best way to gauge the scope of the waves. Now here's two close-up photos of uh, footprints. One shoe print, one footprint. Just looks good in the sand, right? There's me hard at work adjusting the lens on the camera. Now after we were there for a couple hours, we headed back to camp. Where we have to deal with this chipmunk. This chipmunk's been robbing us blind. There aren't many birds in this area. So we're trying to draw them in so we can see what's around. But this chipmunk is just determined to empty that feeder. So what we did is we took some cooking oil and we put it on that pole to see if we could keep him from climbing it. Not only is it, is it just good, clean fun, but you know it's also a good chance for, for maybe a funny shot or two. Let's see if that chipmunk can get up the pole now. Here he is. Here we go. <laughs> yes. Wow. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> now, see, this is one of those shots. It took a little bit of patience waiting for the chipmunk to come in. Yeah, but, you know, once he's tried to climb this pole three or four times, I can cut out all the dead space and edit it up real tight so you can just see his attempts to get up the pole. It's pretty funny. It's just good, innocent humor. Look at him go. And he's not going to clean out the bird feeder that easy. Unfortunately, he did later on pretty much wear all the cooking oil off the pole by trying to climb it. And then he could get right back up it. And, you know, by the time we left camp, he'd pretty much got the pole working again and he was back in the bird feeder. He's probably up there right now, uh, seeing if he can empty that feeder. Good. Now, when it comes to music in your videos, you can buy a music subscription and then use any music that they have in your videos. All the music I do in my videos, I just, it's all my own music. I, I play guitar, uh, I record it on my computer. That's Sometimes I'll put a second singing. track over the first one. I actually just bought this guitar I'm using right now a couple days ago at a play market, oh, man. set it up decent. And this is what I'm using to record this music. Now here's a great shot. Just because the well pump, this bright red well pump, it looks so good against that dark wilderness background. Now our friend Scott Harrima lined us out on how to do this, uh, this well so it doesn't lose the prime. You can see the ball valve underneath the pump. Once you lock that ball valve down, it doesn't lose the prime. Here's another aspect of YouTubing in general. Here's a couple solar appliances that were sent to Brook for review. One is a battery with uh, inverters and different plugs and stuff on it. And the other one is a solar powered cooler. You actually just plug a solar panel into the cooler and uh, the sunnier and hotter it is, I guess the better it works. We've been using it most of the summer and it's done pretty well. So that's one thing that if you're involved in YouTube, uh, people 
want to send stuff for your opinion, for your review. Now these other shots here are just kind of fill-in shots. I got a shot of the water cooler, I got a shot of these tools, that auger, and I don't see anything here that's super visually exciting, but it does kind of help to, to fill in the picture of what the rest of the camp looks like. If something, if I take a shot of something and I think it's interesting and later on I look at it and I'm like, eh, that's, there's really nothing there, it's kind of boring. There's no color, there's, there's nothing interesting. I generally won't use it. Like, I prefer a shot like this. These potatoes look great. That steak looks great. The fire under the steak looks wonderful. You never know where life's going to take you. I started off in my adult life as a cement finisher. I did concrete work for years and years. I still do quite a bit of concrete work. Now, not as much as I used to, but I would have never guessed I would end up doing film work and then judging subjects by color and light and composition. You know, I'm used to being on a set of knee boards uh, scrubbing concrete. I sat down and picked a little bit of guitar and I was filming the guitar and then I take shots and put them over top of that guitar footage so you're still hearing the guitar you're, but you're seeing you know me pouring coffee or you're seeing Brooke in front of the wall tent or driving the truck down the sand roads all the editing software that goes into a video like this is actually super easy to use it's very intuitive I use iMovie it's on a Mac computer and as far as the, the camera gear, I, I've been shooting with the same camera since I started. It's like a Canon HF G20. And it does everything I want it to do. I like the color, the sound, the audio is really good. That's another thing about uh, shooting a lot of stuff outdoors, shooting a lot of stuff at your off-grid properties where you don't have you know, power in the background or stuff running, equipment running. The the audio quality outdoors is so good. When I try to shoot stuff inside, it, it sounds like you're in a culvert. So if you're interested in doing a YouTube channel or you shoot outdoor videos and you like to shoot stuff in, in the wilderness or, or just stuff that's outside, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to have such good light, such good uh, sound. As soon as you go inside of a house, <laughs> you don't have good light, you don't have good sound. So one of the benefits about us people on YouTube that are doing outdoor stuff is it's just it sounds better it looks better colors good the, the audio is always wonderful now the fellow that helped us put in the well Scott Harama he donated this wonderful off-grid shower to us he had this at his cabin years ago and then he put uh, an indoor shower in, and he hasn't used this since. And uh, he was super generous, gave us this shower. Brooke installed this shower while I was in Alaska. And uh, it just works perfect. Just a little battery, just a little pump. Put some hot water in a bucket. Flip the switch, and you literally, you're ready to go. Very simple setup. I'm taking those shots. I wanted to take a shot of the battery. I want to take a shot of the pump. I want to take a shot of the little switch. All of those individual shots, in my opinion, they really bring the, the subject to life. Well, after being at camp for a few days, that shower was fantastic. Just, just a wonderful thing. Now filming at night is always a challenge. The light looks great, but you know, sometimes the camera gets a fuzz grainy, like in this photo, this shot. It's a great thing to be able to be on vacation and be working at the same time, be off grid, but you're, you're actually shooting something that people are gonna see, possibly all the way around the world. And by the time we get ready to go, on the last day, we take all the bedding off the bed. This is one thing people ask about a lot. And we put it in a wooden chest, and that keeps the chipmunks from, from tearing stuff up. 
Now shooting inside like this, I, I don't like the color so much. The, the light is different. So I, I don't really try to shoot a ton indoors, but you kind of have to so people can see what it looks like inside. I've shot so much outside the tent. I've got to shoot some stuff inside the tent, even though I don't like the light as much. So I'm getting shots of, you know, the shell, shots of like our little cabinet. And uh, like I like this shot because of the color. There's a lot of nice color in it. But generally, I don't, I skip over a lot of stuff indoors just because the light's not as good. See, this is so much nicer being outside. So if you shoot YouTube or you're interested in YouTube or just film work in general, I hope this video has been interesting to see at least one perspective of, of what one YouTuber looks for when they're shooting content for their channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me for this video. My name's Dave Whipple and you've been watching Bush Radical. And be radical, eh? See you soon.